Hey YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark again, Nuts for Art, and I'm going to read a little bit more of this book, Poison to Power, uh, by Dr. John Goffman and Dr. Arthur Tamplin. And we are on Chapter 1, and I'm going to read for probably 7-8 minutes, I think. Uh, we're on page 38 in Chapter 1. The title of the chapter is Nuclear Reactors to Generate Electricity. The subtitle of the chapter is the subchapter is called Water Moderated Reactors. That's what we've now got all over the country. When a uranium atom absorbs a neutron and undergoes fission, in addition to producing the two lighter elements, it also emits two or three neutrons. These neutrons can in turn react with other uranium atoms, which will undergo fission producing more neutrons. Since more neutrons are pr produced than consumed, it is possible under the right circumstances for this reaction to proceed at an ever-increasing rate and produce a tremendous amount of heat in a very short period of time. In other words, an uncontrolled nuclear reactor can literally blow itself up. Controlling a nuclear reactor, therefore, means controlling the multiplication of neutrons in the reactor core. The, Iraq, Iraq, excuse me, the reactor core is a cylindrical steel containment vessel into which the fuel elements are inserted. The fuel elements are an assemblage of long, slender rods that contain the uranium in the form of an oxide. Depending upon the size of the reactor, it will contain a large number of these elements and hence thousands of fuel rods. The geometric arrangement of these rods and elements is important because the chain reaction depends upon having a particular concentration of fissionable material in a particular volume. For example, a certain amount of fissionable material in a particularly vessel, excuse me, for example, a certain amount of fissionable material in a particularly shaped vessel can be perfectly safe. If, however, it is, in, it is put into a vessel of a different shape, the mass can become critical and the chain reaction can take place with explosive intensity. So there is a drawing that shows the control rods. I don't know. I'll show it to you in a minute. It says control rods are right here. These ones here. I'll use the pencil. This is control rods, and that points to right here. These are control rods. This is coolant out is right here, coolant out. Reactor vessel, that's this. Removable for refueling, so they could take it out to re put these fuel rods in again. These are fuel rods. Thermal shield is this. There's a little lining right here and a lining right here. That's the thermal shield. Core of solid fuel elements. That's these dark stripes. Water used as a coolant and neutron moderator. So you see glug glug all the water. And then coolant in. So it comes in and comes out that way. So let me see if I can show you this. Got it? So, hmm, it's pretty interesting. He has another picture on the next page. Once a reactor core is assembled, it has the critical mass of uranium in an appropriate volume. That is precisely why the reactor works. But in addition to the critical mass of uranium, the reactor has control rods. These rods, when inserted into the reactor core, are able to absorb neutrons. When they are all inserted into the core, they absorb so many neutrons that not enough are available to sustain the chain reaction. As the rods are gradually withdrawn, the power level of the reactor increases. Mm -hmm. 
The above explanation of controlling a nuclear reactor sounds simple. In principle, it is simple. But between that simple explanation and the design of a truly safe reactor lies a great deal of engineering sophistication. We shall go into this further in Chapter 6. Besides safety, there is a collateral aspect of nuclear power plants, i.e. reliability. Because of the serious hazard associated with the radioactivity accumulated in the core of a reactor, the safe operational limits of the reactor relate to its reliability. A nuclear power station may be required to shut down simply because it is releasing or may potentially release too much radioactivity to the environment. One of the questions that we explore in this book is if adequate or more restrictive regulations are imposed on the present nuclear power reactors, would they be allowed to operate at all? So he, this is the, his, at the top it says liquid metal fast breeder reactor, pressurized water reactor. So he's going to talk to us next about breeder reactors. I see. So this is the breeder reactor, pressurized water reactor. So here I'll show you the picture. Can you see it? I think so. Anyways, breeder reactors. Let me see how many minutes. Oh, we're at 646. Let's see how far the breeder reactors go. Well, let's, let's go on. I'll read for eight minutes. The fissionable, the fissionable material in the present water-moderated reactor is uranium-235. Uranium-235 represents only about 1% of the natural uranium. That is 0.71%. The rest is composed of the heavier isotope uranium-238. Uranium-238 cannot be made to undergo fission except by high-energy neutrons, which are not created when uranium-235 undergoes fission. However, uranium-238 can be converted into a fissionable material, plutonium-239, when it absorbs a neutron. So... That's what happens. Uranium-238 converts into a fissionable material, which is plutonium-239, when it absorbs a neutron. The present-day nuclear reactors discussed above are moderated by water. By moderated, it is meant that the neutrons, which the uranium-235 releases upon undergoing fission, are slowed down, quote, reduced in energy, unquote, by the water. The present nuclear reactors also contain uranium-238, and when the uranium-238 captures a neutron, it is converted to plutonium-239. In the present reactors, because the neutrons are moderated or slowed down by the water in the reactor, the uranium-235 emits fewer neutrons than it would if it underwent fission as a result of absorbing faster neutrons. As a consequence, less plutonium-239 is made in the present reactors than 235 that is burned. There is a net consumption of fissionable material, considerably more fissionable material is consumed than is produced. Hmm. Okay, that's interesting. I'm going to stop right there, you guys. Um, I want to thank everybody for your kind words and support, and I'm glad that we are edifying each other and encouraging each other to put our courage feet on and, and put our thinking caps on and do our best and do what we can because we need everybody in this. And uh, I'm going to talk about something that I heard on the Richie Allen show, which is, you know, I don't know if you guys know I do EFT, but EFT is emotional freedom technique. And there was someone on there saying that we really need to do that to shake off all that mind control stuff and, you know, get the truth out in love and self-love and, you know, really be on this planet as we are intended.
So, ciao, you guys. Put your courage feet on. I'll talk to you later. Bye.